our world has been thrown upside down. So uh, within a two day period, um, within a two days of notification last March, we were identified and, and notified by the governor that all schools in Minnesota would be shut down. So we went from individuals having instruction on site to being told in that 48 hours that schools must be closed indefinitely. So when we talk about that, we talk about students left school on one day thinking that they were going to be able to return and never were able to. So we had 48 hours to develop instruction and to provide systems in place to make sure that every one of our 14,000 students could receive a quality education uh, from their home. So because of this crisis crunch time, many school districts took their face-to-face -face schedule and they moved it into an online setting. That's a recipe for failure, disaster, heartache by students, by teachers. So you would never design online learning that way. Now many, because we've been doing this for almost a year now in the state, a lot of districts have done some shifting in the schedules for students, schedules for teachers, because the workload was, was too much. So our, our schedule uh, changed a lot. I know uh, last, like, you know, kind of our initial, everybody's first dive into distance learning last spring, our, our, we, everybody really wanted to stick with our current daily schedule. You know, we want to fall back on what we know. We're doing it online, but we're, you know, we're just kind of doing what we do differently. To have students on a, like a virtual call or Google Meet that long, like for a, you know, basically like they would be in class online, but in class logged into a video call, um, and then they would have passing time. <laughs> so they would jump out of a call, uh, have their like passing time, just like we would at the school day, and they would jump back on a different video call for the next class. And like at our, our high school level, on that 9-12 level, we run a block schedule. So those are like 85 minute classes. Uh, so that, that I think we recognized right away was a very, very long time to be on a, a video call. So that schedule changed um, back to, uh, we focused on, so we still met every formally hour, but that meeting time was really turned into like a class meeting. So at the beginning of the school day, the students would log on to their class the first class and that's where the teacher would do like direct instruction um, and that I mean that obviously varied in every content area but somewhere between 10 minutes um, sometimes lessons would be 45 minutes long uh, but then the rest of that class time would be kind of office hours or time for students to do work like whatever that work is whatever that activity is that we're asking them to do we ran that schedule Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday um, and our Fridays in a distance learning setting um, turn into that flex day. So students would check in in their, like their homeroom or their advisory um, to check in. We would do some kind of just like team building lessons there to try to keep kids connected to one another as well. Um, and then that was also the rest of Friday was kind of our um, like an enrichment or a catch up day. So teachers available to students, working with students, um, a lot more one on one and small group for those who needed it. I went to a little like hourly training session about the flipped classroom model and that really resonated with me. So instead of your typical like you, you, you think of a classroom and you think okay the teacher's going to be up there at the front, they're going to lecture, we're going to have a discussion, whatever, whatever, and then they give the students assignments, homework, to do at home, right? The flipped classroom is like okay, the lectures become probably videos, right, a video lesson that you give to the students, their homework is to watch that, and then their time in the classroom is work time. So they can, you know, actually, um, you know, the, the advantages of the flipped classroom is that instead of having your parents try to help you with this trigonometry homework that like, man, who's going to be able to remember how to do trigonometry by the time, you know, they have kids who are in high school, uh, like, you've got the teacher whose job it is to know trigonometry, right? They're there to help you. And, you know, then you can watch those lectures at home. Maybe your parents can watch it with you and like, they might learn something interesting about trigonometry. Like everybody kind of loves this system once they start using it. Um, and and I, I feel like it was essential to do that during uh, online learning. Um, whether, you know, whether we had synchronous classes scheduled or whether we were just doing asynchronous like you know uh, office hours and stuff like that um, 
but yeah, it's I, I feel like the flipped classroom model is a really good one, both for being in, in the classroom, but also for being online. And now that we have kind of built this institutional expertise around you know, all of this, the, the technology that we're using and the techniques that we're using and what we expect students to do while they're at home. Um, I think that's a really positive thing. But one of the most challenging pieces was what really works for one family doesn't work for another. So for example, we had a family who, we have families that felt like we should be conducting school the same way we did in person at home, where a student had to report at the same time, be involved in the class for 50 minutes, have a three minute break like they would do in a hall, passing in the halls and go to their next online class. Where we had other families that just said, that's too much. Do a little bit of instruction, give some opportunities for work, allow there to be office hours, allow there to be check-ins, allow students to um, kind of be more in charge of their own independent learning. We also had families who said, just tell us what we need to do and let us go. We want us, we want to have access. We want our kids to be able to work during the day now during a pandemic, or we need them to work on the farm or to take care of their brothers and sisters. We want them to be able to do their work in the evenings or on weekends. We don't want the traditional Monday through Friday, eight to four school schedule. And so we continue to modify and adjust. So post pandemic, what does that look like? We are providing many, many different options to support the wishes of all of our families. So families will be able to choose a full-time online learning uh, model. Families will be able to continue to participate in a blended learning model where some days they're at school and some days they're at home. We are going to allow individuals from early childhood or kindergarten all the way through 12th grade to participate in online type learning. And then we're getting to a point now where students uh, throughout our community, whether it be homeschool or whether it be um, families that don't typically have access to particular expertise. I think about a high level math, a calculus class or an organic type chemistry class. Opportunities for students to engage in part time types of experience so they can have uh, an experience that fits the needs uh, for them and their families. So post pandemic, we will have a lot of options for people and we'll continue to navigate our systems to make sure we can do that successfully.